rejoice, and we will be glad in it. We will start out with our first hymn this morning, 219. Father God, and you will bless each and every one of us, Father God. And we finish this 
service that we will go out feeling different than when we came in, but a better spirit, praising you and glorifying you and lifting your holy name on high. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And now we'll have our scripture reading, which will be coming from St. John 21. Verses 1 through 14. Would everyone please stand? First, 20, uh, chapter 21. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. There were to, together Simon, Peter, and Thomas, called Diplismus, and Nathan of Cana of Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any meat? They answered him not, no. And he said unto them, Cast thy net on the sea side on the right side of the ship, mm -hmm. and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitudes of fishes. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits dragging a net with fishes. As soon then they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon and bread. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish would ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, and hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, Come and die. And none of the disciples dared ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. Verse 14. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Amen. And the Lord of the blessings was already blessed and holy. Okay, now our next song will be managed to will be on the screen of all of us. Praise God. Praise God.
now we have our notices and announcements for this Sunday, October 17, 2021. We first have on our prayer, we have special prayer requests this morning for our brother Wilfred Williams, for Sister Gabriella, Gabriella George, Sister Edra Sykes, Sister Marion Williams, and Sharon Williams. The sick and shut in members, the bereaved and those in the military and law enforcement. We're lifting them up in prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have birthdays this week. Let us rejoice for that. Amen. Monday, October 18th, we have Miss Lumley, Anessa Lumley. We'll give my pronunciation of your names this morning. Oh, all right, yeah. <laughs> On Tuesday, October 19th, trustee Ricardo Carney. Thursday, October 21st, Miss Michelle Tyree. Help me, help me. May they all have a blessed day in the name of Jesus. And now we have wedding bells are ringing. Congratulations to the newlyweds, Mr. and Mrs. Vincent and Talk Tommy. Jeffries, Toby, Jeffries. Are you in the sanctuary? No. No. I'm just checking on that honey. Just checking. Praise God. We have now our coming events. Mark your calendar. Saturday, October 30th. Hallelujah party, mm -hmm. trunk or treat. Uh -huh. A collaborative effort of St. Baptist, Second Baptist Church Youth Ministries mm -hmm. from 2 to 4 p.m. in the church lot. No goddish costumes. Mm -hmm. All vehicles participating must have biblically themed decor. Moving on to Thanksgiving blessings. The Sunday School Ministry will be blessing families again this year with Thanksgiving meals. If you're in need of a meal for your family, please sign up and drop your request in the box located upstairs near the bulletin board. Forms will be available on the info table as well as in the parking lot door on Sunday mornings between 9.30 and 10.30 a.m. Also we have, please note, the church virtual office hours are currently 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Saturday mornings. Please use Facebook Messenger or email the church at sbcrosellenj at gmail.com seven days a week with any questions or inquiries no phone calls at this time response time can take up to 48 hours please be patient Moving along with these announcements. <laughs> Please bear with me this morning. Unexpected events. <laughs> My God, praise God. Ways to remain faithful in your giving. Don't forget our missions, building and scholarship funds. Option one, mail in directly to the church. P.O. Box 304 or the opponent member. Option two, drop off on Sundays between 9 and 10 a.m. Option three, electronically drop the text to give feature from
from the ACPO's website, website. Simply text, give, whatever amount you choose, to 833-561-0179. Then follow the prompts to set up your account. Ways to stay connected. Prayer calls Monday through Friday at 5.40 a.m. sharp. 6 p.m. on Fridays at 12 noon. At 605-475-3215. Access code is 916-920. Reach weekly virtual Sunday school is from 9 to 9.45 a.m. Um, we have a new ID number. I don't know if um, We can check with um, call office to, to verify the Sunday school new virtual phone number. What we have now is the, uh, ID 884. 3320-4242. New York, New Jersey residents phone into 645-558-8656. If you have a problem, please call the office to verify that because I'm not really sure if that's the actual number to be called. In-person worship service with social distancing. Facebook, Instagram Live, and conference call at 10 a.m. Sundays. YouTube playback is also available. Tuesday Bible studies at 10.30 a.m. and 7 p.m. via conference call. Dial in at 978-990-50. Zero, zero. The access code is 374-329. The playback number, if you happen to miss the Bible studies, you can also call back to 978-990-5099. And we also have Thursday night young adult Bible study at 9.30 p.m with Pastor Mike, VI, Zoom. Please note, church families, as our doors are open for limited church services in person, please stay connected for updates through the diaconate and ministry leaders. Measures are in place to ensure confident health, screening, social distancing, and hygienical practices we, we ask that even we ask when in service masks remain on the entire time, even with social distancing. Cover your mouth and nose at all times. Please contact Deacon Joseph Williams, who's always available, at 908-245-414717 or Reverend Verley Jones at 973-704-1040 should you need anything. And I pray that all the announcements were received in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. announcements. As a matter of fact, uh, every now and then we'll have someone else try it. <laughs> it's not so easy, but to God be the glory. Thank you, Brother Bison. Yeah. Again, good morning to everyone. This is another day the Lord has made. We are rejoicing. We are being glad in it. Praise God. Uh, today I'm still on my snaggertooth side. I'm, my, my, my dentures are being repaired <laughs> in Jesus' name, praise God. So in the meantime, 
Amen. I'm still rejoicing. Amen. Praise God. Teeth and no teeth. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The tooth, whole tooth, nothing but the tooth. <laughs> that was hot on the press. To God be the glory. Amen. We, that was wild. Wow, that was really original. Amen. But we also want to uh, thank God, amen, for our special visit uh, today, amen, with our, uh, from Sister Ross Catino's niece and a uh, great niece, praise God, in the person of Shanique Banks and uh, her daughter Summer Banks. Amen. Praise God. And Summer, praise God. And she also, uh, Summer brought her uh, doll baby Izzy. Amen. Hold up, hold up Izzy, Summer. Amen. Yeah, there you go. Izzy's here. Hallelujah. So to God be the glory. We thank you so much for visiting with us today. We hope you enjoyed the service. And uh, if you don't have a church home, consider Second Baptist. If you do, amen, I grow where you're planted, praise the Lord. But as often as you visit, consider yourself home, praise the Lord. And uh, you're, only, you're only a visitor, a stranger once, praise the Lord. After that, we consider you like family. May God bless you, bless you, and have a smile upon you is our prayer. God bless you. Thank you. We thank God, amen, for... Uh, Shani been uh, such an amazing host, amen, in the homegoing service, amen, of her uh, uncle, praise the Lord, yeah. Donald Banks, amen, who was his uh, brother, amen, amen, who transitioned to be with the Lord, and we just give God the glory and the praise for you, Shani, mm -hmm. Shani with an O, because I had a, a niece that was Shani with an A, to God be the glory, and, uh, and also it was amazing that uh, during the service uh, that it was, uh, it was Shani and Shakia, Amen. Which uh, there's a Shakia in her family. Is that your sister? My cousin. So it was Shanique and, and, and Shakia, which I had two nieces, Shanique and Shakia. It's like, oh, this is amazing. To God be the glory. So we thank God for you, your life, your legacy, and the legacy and life of your uncle. Praise the Lord. And uh, for uh, the Banks and Catino family, may God bless you, bless you and have a smile upon you. And again, we just say good morning again to all of our guests and our visitors today. Thank God, amen, uh, that the Thomases are still with us from Florida. To God be the Lord of the Saints. And we thank you very much for turning the wedding bells down while you came to the Saints' word. Praise God, otherwise you can hear a word I'm saying, you just see my lips moving. But uh, we thank you for turning the wedding bells down. You can turn them back up full force when you leave the church sanctuary. Okay, praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. And to God be the glory for all of our guests and visitors, amen, our sisters, amen, that often visit with us, amen, from China and Korea, amen, praise the Lord. So I can uh, say the uh, same words, amen, but different language, come Saminak and Shishini. Thank you very much in Korea, Shishini in Chinese, amen, God bless you. Amen, and bendicione and Gloria a Dios and bendicione and vaya con Dios in my idioma in español, okay? Reverend Ed, I keep saying Reverend Ed. Did, you know, did I pass the test? Pase examinacione, profesor. Okay, muchas gracias, bendicione, amen. Praise the Lord. And did I pass, Sergio? Be a man, I pass? Do I pass the examination in my idioma in español? Si. Gracias, hermano. Amen. Praise God. And I think you're teaching coughs in Spanish. Is that right? And uh, Deacon Ed, you're teaching Reverend Vanessa Spanish? Yes. Okay. Praise the Lord. So we're going to be multilingual soon. Amen. Praise the Lord. With all of this. Amen. Write your name. Como se va? Okay. Merci beaucoup. Amen. Praise God. Como ye? Okay, Mambole, Mambole, praise God. I'm learning, I'm learning Creole too. To God be the glory. We're, we're international, amen. Praise God. And if you're from the hood, yo, what's up? <laughs> to God be the glory. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So, Miss Naira, come on up, Miss Naira, praise God, because she's also one of our artists in residence, residence amen. Naira does a lot of painting, praise God. And then one time, didn't Naira have a display at one time? 
Or was that uh, Miss Sydney? Sydney? No, Sydney, yeah. Did it's Nada Sydney. do her display yet? No, not yet. Okay, come on up, Nada. Nada's going to adventure in uh, her display. You show, show us your artwork that you painted. Praise God. Hold it nice and hard. to work and we want to display their talents and their abilities, praise God. And uh, also, uh, Miss Nyla has been responsible, amen, uh, forgive me Nyla, uh, but she's responsible for making masks. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, my, Mommy, uh, I, I thought I had it right here, to God be the glory. But she makes psychedelic masks. <laughs> Amen. Back in the psychedelic age. Anybody come from that age? Oh, Amen. No. Praise the Lord. Church. <laughs> and so, you know, we have those uh, tie-dye. Tie-dye. There we go. The tie-dye masks. And so we thank God for Miss Nyla. Amen. And uh, you can always see her after service. Amen. And we like to put it in the order. Praise God. <laughs> thank you to God for your artwork. And we, we congratulate you. Praise God. Hallelujah. We want to uh, just uh, lift up all of the talents that we have in our church because there are no big eyes and there are no little ears. Everybody's important in the house of God. We thank God and then, uh, also for uh, Sister Rosetta uh, who's up in Florida because they're helping to finalize our commemorative journal as our church celebrates 130 years. Amen. And to God be Cover page is it's, it's a shot of well I, I will, should I mention it no, no, don't mention it it's a, I can the cover page is a shot of our sanctuary to not be the glory with no one sitting in the pews but just to see the awesomeness of our sanctuary amen and uh, it has so many uh, commemorative artifacts and history of our church over 130 years. To God be the glory, so uh, because Sister Rosetta was responsible uh, for uh, helping to establish our Christian writers yes. here at Southern Baptist Church, yes. of which she's been uh, a writer of many books. Also, college professor at one time. At one time. At one time, a college professor. And her daughter, Sister Shauna, was a college professor, uh, instructor, professor. <laughs> Praise God, Sister Rosetta has uh, lit a, a, a fire under our bushel. To, to start writing books. She's pro uh, provoked us to write books. So she was the initial book writer, and now we have many uh, published book writers right here in Second Baptist Church, and some have uh, launched your own personal works. And so to yeah. God be the glory. Amen. So if you want to learn how to get involved and learn how to write and publish your own book, amen, you can see those of our Christian Writers Ministry. But we thank God and give kudos, amen, to Sister Rosetta for sparking that fire. <laughs> support from her husband Sam. God, <laughs> you know, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because you can have a match, but if you don't have anything to burn it with, to God be the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Anything to burn with the fire, praise God, it just goes out. To God be the Lord. So thank you, Brother Sam, for uh, being the flame of her fire. And keep that fire burning. In Jesus' name. Amen. To God be the Lord. Amen. 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 Yes, if anyone is going to participate in the trunk or tree on October 30th, it's from 2 to 4. If you would like to decorate your trunks, we just ask that you come at 1 p.m. here in the parking lot so you can start setting up and have it ready for 2 o'clock. And if you have any questions, you can call myself or Sister Star. And amen. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Praise God. And that is uh, Saturday. Uh, what is that? O October 30th. October 30th. Praise the Lord. We don't celebrate Halloween. We celebrate Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. So on the day before the, the, the world's Halloween, we celebrate the Lord's Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Because it happens to be on a Sunday. We're celebrating on, on a Saturday. But uh, anytime that Halloween falls on whatever day of the year, uh, of, of the week in the year, uh, we're, we're always going to celebrate Hallelujah night. God be God. So God. no ghoulish costumes and things of that nature, but but we want to, if you want to use Bible characters, that type of thing, if you want to be Moses, Daniel, Ezekiel, <laughs> Esther, amen, uh, Deborah, any of the great uh, matriarchs and patriarchs of faith, to God be the glory. Amen. And so, uh, this morning, 
I was greeted at the door. Um, uh, Trustee Carlson uh, handed me uh, a, 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 a bag, and it actually came from the Friends of New Jersey Legacy Foundation Incorporated, uh, the Juneteenth. Have you heard of Juneteenth? Oh, yeah. To God be the glory. And uh, on the inside, amen, uh, we got a, a plaque. It's uh, from Opal Lee, mm -hmm. dated October the 9th, 2021. It says, Dear Juneteenth Ambassador, I, along with friends of the New Jersey Legacy Foundation, uh, Positive Community, and Mount Tina and AMB Church, honor you for your advocacy and support of Juneteenth. Your contributions have helped to bring uh, awareness of the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration, commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. And you have helped to make Juneteenth a state and federal holiday in New Jersey. From its Galveston, Texas origin in 1865, the observance of June 19th through today's tribute to our jury, the, commem the, commem the commemoration of African American freedom has been the focus of every celebration. And we commend you for your focus and fortitude in the ongoing fight for freedom. Sincerely, Opal Lee, to God be the glory. All right, all right. Also included, uh, this is the first reprint of Senate 19, number 19, State of New Jersey, 219th legislative uh, uh, printing introduced on June the 25th of 2020. Amen. And uh, this is so lengthy, it's incredible, but this is a formal act, amen, of June 10th by our state legislators. There's one, two, and I'm talking about line by line. There's about, there are about four, four or five pages from our state legislators that are commemorating uh, the abolition of slavery and the celebration of those that have been the uh, ancestors and the uh, progenitors, amen, of Juneteenth. To God be the glory. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it says, uh, synopsis designates as state and public holiday third Friday in June as Juneteenth Day. Yeah. To God be the glory. Yeah. So we come back. Amen. Praise the Lord. They also, I don't know why they gave it to me because uh, if there are more people worthy than worthy of this to myself, but it says congratulations. And they put my name on it, but it should be Second Baptist Church, but they included a, a medal. A junior team. Because so many others have uh, done things in my absence, amen, that deserve this praise of the Lord, but uh, I, I dedicate this to the church, amen. And for all of you that have labored, amen, to make God this a commemorative yes. and, and uh, recognized day. To God yes. be the glory. Be Amen. 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 I know you noticed the announcement was a little bit lengthy today, but to God be the glory. We're going to get into the word very shortly. Amen. But I also want to uh, congratulate. Amen. Uh, first of all, happy birthday to uh, Pastor Mike Tyree. Turned 45. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. But I also want to congratulate. Uh, Brother uh, Vincent Jeffries and his new wife, Toby Franklin Jeffries, amen, who were married just yesterday, praise the Lord. So uh, we, we can write so they'll be away for about two weeks, amen, and uh, on the honeymoon, praise God. So we have another couple that we have to ask, to please turn your wedding bell down when you come into the church so we can hear what's going on. Amen. So, Deacon Ed, Reverend Vanessa, Deacon, <laughs> Brother Rich, Sister Sean, and Brother Sam, and Sister Rosette, and, and on and on, Carlson, and Sergio, and Amen, Everton, and Sonia, and Amen, and Deacon Joe, and Deaconess Catherine. Just please, thank you very much for being so sensitive to our ears' needs. Amen. You can turn those wedding bell buyers back up after service is over outside. <laughs> so we can hear. All right. We love you, and we're just trying to provoke uh, a greater love in marriage and relationships. May God bless you and bless you in heaven smile upon you. The most important announcement of all is this. Yes, Lord. 
Jesus Christ, he is soon to come. And it will pay us to be ready because ready or not, Jesus is coming. My question to you is, are you ready? Because Jesus is coming. Could you look to a neighbor to your left, to your right, in front of you, behind you, and say, neighbor? neighbor. Ready or not? Ready or not. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Are, you ready? Are you ready? Look to another neighbor and say, neighbor? neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Ready, or ready or not? Jesus is coming. Jesus. Are you ready? Are you ready? And as Smokey the Christian Bear would say, <laughs> only you can prevent eternal fires. Right. Amen. Right. Praise God. Right. This, was, this was also done by our our second artist in residence, we have about three or four, Brother Naphtali Carter. Stand up, Naphtali. Praise God. Praise God. So we have talent, and we want to expose it. Praise the Lord, because everybody's important and valuable here at Second Baptist Church. So God be the glory. Well, we're going to be sharing the Word of God momentarily, uh, but just before we do, we have a pleasant surprise. Amen. Uh, all the way from Roselle, New Jersey. Amen. We have a solo. Hallelujah. Amen. In the person of our own first lady, Reverend Margaret Moore. Amen. May God bless her. As she Yeah. 
In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Martin, for leading us in that song. And thank you, my brothers and sisters. Amen for your participation in our service to lead us to this preaching moment. Our scripture text has been read from John's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 1 through number 14. John's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. i just like to read these verses once again for your hearing in case you did not hear them. The Word of God says, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. Therefore, or there were together Simon, Peter, and Thomas, called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and the two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto him, Unto them I go a fishing. Yeah. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship. And ye shall find. So they cast their four, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fishers' coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciple, the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were 200 cubits dragging the net with fishes. Verse 9, as soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fishes which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and die. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fishes likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. May the Lord God add a rich blessing to the reading and hearing of his most holy word. I'd like to use for a topic this afternoon or this morning. Wake up and smell the fishes. <laughs> well, I guess you thought I was going to say wake up and smell the coffee. <laughs> wake up and smell the fishes. I, I heard a, a, a song, it was a jingle on TV, it was about a coffee commercial. You know, being that we're talking about, you're thinking about wake up and smell the coffee. Well, there was that old coffee commercial, and it said, the best part of waking up is focus in your cup. Right? Praise the Lord. The best part of waking up. Amen. So I just figured I use the best part of waking up is Jesus in your life. Amen. Amen. The best part of waking up, the best part of waking up is Jesus in your life. I heard somebody say, you know, being that they're talking about jingle, they said, uh, you know, uh, talking about uh, something is the best thing that ever happened to me, Coca-Cola or whatever. Jesus is the best thing oh, yeah. that ever happened to me. Yeah. So I know they put a spin and a twist on all those phrases out there and all those songs and all those jingles, and I can always put Jesus, amen, into 
my song to God be the glory. I don't know what you do about your song, but my song, I can put Jesus, amen, in my song because he's the best thing that ever happened to me. And the best part of waking up, the best part of waking up is Jesus in my life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Now, back in the day, many of us can remember waking up to the aroma of bacon, fish, sausage, or country ham. Mm. <laughs> Wafting through the air into our bedrooms while at the same time you could detect the distinctive smell of grits, eggs, toast, or biscuits, and coffee. Permeating throughout the atmosphere. Well before the second member of the household ever awakened from their sleep. So somebody got up first to do all of this. Yes, it was that matriarch or patriarch of that family's household that customarily got out of their bed one to maybe, maybe one to two hours before the first family members rose up from sleep to prepare a nourishing breakfast for their soon to be awakened family. Does anybody remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, there uh, was that special someone who always sacrificed the personal pleasure of getting an extra few winks or snuggling under the killers. I know it's covers, but some, you know, when you come from certain states, it's killers. Get under the killers. Snuggling under the killers for just a few more hours. They sacrificed those personal pleasures so that they could rise up early enough to cook breakfast to make sure that their family would experience one of the better parts of waking up in the morning. Does anybody remember that? Well, Jesus was always that perfect example of sacrificing his personal pleasure opportunities in exchange for opportunities to serve others. For example, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, and I'm using emphasis here, says, For God hath made Jesus to be sent for us. Now, I know the scripture says, For, for he hath made him to be sent for us. But I have to put emphasis so that you understand who we're talking about. 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For God hath made Jesus to be sent for us, who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Jesus. Now I love the scripture again, that's why I'm right, uh, putting out an emphasis because the scripture says, uh, because uh, that, that, he, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, meaning Jesus, amen. So I'll read it again with the emphasis. For God hath made Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Jesus. Now, the, Wake up and smell the fish. Uh, I, I, I'm constantly reminded, or, or should I say, I, I've just been reminded anew and afresh in a more emphasized way that Jesus was always doing something in preparation for us. So he would sacrifice his, his own personal pleasure, his own sleep, uh, his own uh, time clock that he could have absorbed to himself, but he considered others uh, to be more important than his own sleep. To the point that there were times where he was ministering to people, raising people from the dead, and opening blind eyes, and making the lame walk and the dumb to talk, and you know, just performing all types of miracles to the point that he would just go hours upon hours upon hours ministering to people to the point that uh, his own apostles were exhausted. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, sometimes the people loved Jesus so much and listening to his word and watching him perform miracles that uh, they, they ran out of food, but it didn't matter because his word was sustenance and, and his word was, was their pure delight to the point that sometimes they would just go days and all of a sudden uh, Jesus would say, well, have you ever meet? Because uh, the, the, he realized the people were hungry and they were weary. The apostles said, well, Lord, uh, 
we don't have anything. Uh, uh, should we go into town and, and, and buy some? But what, what, the money that we have, what is this to so many people that have to be fed? But then Peter, I believe it was Peter, said to the Lord, well, Lord, there's this, was it Peter that said there's this little boy that had two fish and five? Was it him or Andrew? Andrew. It was Andrew. Okay. Andrew. Andrew said, Andrew's Peter's brother. Andrew said to Jesus, well, Lord, there's a young lad here. He's got two fish and five barley loaves. No, wait a minute. How did you know what was in that boy's lunchbox? <laughs> now, while the revival was going on in the desert, were you sweating that boy's lunchbox? Because you knew the exact number of fish, you knew the exact number of loaves, and you knew what kind of loaves they were. They were barley loaves. He had two fish and five barley loaves. So Jesus said, give them to me. So the young boy, he gladly and without resistance gives up his lunch. Now, that's kind of difficult when you're hungry. You're in the desert, don't know when you're going to get your next meal. Uh, but yet, this child was compliant to the master's request. Yes. Yes. He wasn't like Stymie. Right. <laughs> Stymie was given an option about, and he was being tested by one of his pals, one of his buddies. He says, now Stymie, you have two watermelons. You give Spanky one, how many watermelons do you have left? Well, he said, two. <laughs> Stymie. Listen, you have two watermelons, and you give Spanky one watermelon. How many watermelons do you have left? He said, two. He said, Stanley, you don't have two watermelons. You have one left, not two left. He said, uh-uh, brother, because I ain't giving my, water my watermelons to nobody. So Stein was always going to have two watermelons. Amen. But this little boy gave up these two fish and these five barley loaves, and thousands, 5,000 people were fed. But the miracle of it all was Jesus took it, he blessed it, gave it to the apostles, told them to distribute it to these people that he had to sit down in, 50, in, in numbers of 50 or numbers of 50s and 100s. And as they were fed, now Jesus says, is everyone full? Anyone else want any more fish? Any more bread? Now, it's incredible. Two fish, five barley loaves, fed 5,000. Now, get this 5,000 men. I'm going to come back to this in a moment, if you remind me. Hey, Amen. No, we're full. You sure? You don't want any more? It's like when you go and ate all that you could eat, and somebody tries to say, would you like uh, some more cake, some more pie? Would you like some more dessert? They say, oh, I can't take another bite. Okay, fine. Gather up all of the fragments that are left. They gathered up the fragments that were left from two fish and five barley loaves, ending up with 12 baskets full of fish and bread. How do you start with two fish and five barley loaves that are in a boy's lunchbox, ending up with 12 baskets full of fish and loaves of bread? Because little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And so 5,000, get this, men were fed. But that was not including the women and the children. And so if you consider, on an average, there are about two women, there are generally more when it comes to the numbers, when it comes to the ratio. There's generally about five or six women to one man in the world. And if we were to take a little poll today as far as the number of women to men that are in the church say, oh, well, our, our male population is really growing <laughs> to God be the glory. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, but just say there are two women to every one man. So 5,000 men. Then if there were two women to every man, that would be uh, 10,000 women. And say if there were just one child to one woman, just on an average, because generally there's two to three. Amen. So that's 
10,000 children, 10,000 women, 5,000 men. How much is that? 25,000 people were fed by, with two fish and five barley loaves. We're talking about the power of God being demonstrated here. Amen. Glory to God. And he can do more than that. Praise the Lord. If he wanted to, he could have fed the whole world with nothing. He could have just said, be filled. All right. And you be filled. I mean, he can take a lame body, a racked up, a messed up, jacked up body and say, be healed, and be healed. Amen. He can take a blind person and say, see, and you see. Amen. He can take a person that's lame and, and they can't walk, amen, and then he can just, just say, be healed, and they're healed, praise God. He can just tell some people with his word. He doesn't have to touch you. That, that because there, there were some lepers. There were ten of them. And there were lepers. And they said, uh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon us. And the people, uh, all of these skeptics and the critics, try to hush, be quiet, try to tone them down and pipe them down. Pipe down with all that stuff. You stop hollering out to Jesus. You're lepers. Get away. Get away. And they cried out the loud and said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon us. What do you want? We want to be healed. Jesus just said, go show yourselves to the priest. Didn't even right. touch them. Right. His word alone had enough power. He said, just go show yourself to the priest. And as they were going to show themselves to the priest, the Bible says they were cleansed. Now doctors today, they consider the word healed or cured, really, a dangerous word to say, so they'll say, you're in remission. Yeah. They'll say, you're doing better. It, it stopped. But to say cured, they don't want to put their license on the line. They don't want to lose their medical credentials. Because just in case things reverse and you get worse, well, you said I was cured. I'm going to sue you. They know that we're in a litigious world. So they'll say, well, you're in remission. But when these lepers went to show themselves to the priests, they were cleansed, which means they were cured. They will, leprosy will never come back in their bodies because Jesus spoke the word. To, you don't need me. I don't need to touch. Just go show yourself to the priest. That was sufficient. And they were all cured, all ten of them, but only one had enough gratitude to come back and give the Lord thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the God. I'm pure. I'm clean. And Jesus said, well, worse than that, 10? That would cleanse? Where are the other nine? I don't know, Lord. I can't speak for them, but I'm speaking for me. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we have people in the house today that are speaking for themselves. Amen. I can't speak for this one, that one, the other one, but I can speak for me. Hallelujah. Amen. I, can, I can't speak for what they're not talking in hand, but I'm talking my hand. I can't say why folks are shouting for joy, but I'm shouting for joy. I can't speak for other folks why they're not testifying, but I believe I'm testifying. But I just couldn't keep it to myself with the Lord has done for me. Oh, you ought to be there when you say my soul that, that Sunday morning, that Tuesday night, that Wednesday evening, that early afternoon, when the Lord put my name on the wall, I start walking, I start talking, I start singing, I start shouting of what the Lord has done for me, baby. I go out and witness my life. Amen. See, when you go to an altar, to eat, first of all, you got to eat for yourself. Right. <laughs> if you pay the, 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 the ticket or pay the price to get in, praise God, and you sit there and all that food is there, and you, you don't put anything on the plate, you don't put anything in your mouth, you don't eat, well, you can't walk out the place and say, I ain't going back to that restaurant no more. <laughs> I went in there hungry and came out hungry. Well, you didn't eat anything. <laughs> praise the Lord. Taste and see. Lord, 
your presence is, the Bible says it, in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy and it is right here there are pleasures forevermore. But you have to reach out and experience the Lord for yourself. And so God was always about preparation. And he was always the one doing it before you did. I remember it clear as day. Every time I visited my grandparents down in the little town called uh, Spindale, North Carolina. And it would be about maybe 5 o'clock in the morning. It's dark outside. But, but I, I woke up and I smelled country ham. And it's dark. It's like the house is dark. I smell country ham. I smell biscuits. I smell eggs. I smell mm, coffee. Mm. And I'm rolling over a little bit more. I said, this just can't be my imagination. I really smell this. And every now and then I would hear a little you know, pot or pan or something like that in, in the kitchen. Hey Amen. I, I was several rooms away. And I said, my grandma's up there cooking breakfast for everybody. And so I just lay there because I knew sooner or later grandma was going to come back. Jimmy, breakfast is ready. George, that's my grandfather. Breakfast is ready. George, Bubba, that's my uncle. Breakfast is ready. Lois, that's my mom. Breakfast, Greg, Richard, Bobby, breakfast is ready. Praise God. And so we wake up. And, and, and nobody has to, oh man, do I have to wake up? Now we need breakfast. I, I'll sleep. Can I be sleep a little? No, we were waiting. I think we were all waiting for Grandmommy just to let us know breakfast. Because we just sprung up out of bed. Couldn't wait to get in the kitchen. Do I have a window? Because yeah. some of y'all grew up in a household uh, with fish and, and grits. Yeah. Some of y'all grew up with bacon and eggs and toast. Big joke. Oh, we'll find out who you are. I'm going to hit that nerve in a minute. Some of y'all woke up to Aki and Saltfish. All right, I'm getting there, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Some, some of you woke up, amen, uh, to pinto beans, amen, and, uh, and a little rice to God be God with a little, little ham hocks on the inside, praise God, for breakfast, amen. Oh, I'm, I'm hitting some nerves here, praise the Lord. But the, but the coffee was always in the air, praise the Lord. And the toast. And, and what was that? Who said so? Country ham. Oh, country ham, yes. And Grandma would have a way of making that country ham. Because it was always full of salt. Right? And so it's like, how are we going to get the salt out? Because every time we brought the country ham from down south, and I tried to cook it, it just tastes taste like salt. But every time I ate it at Grandma down in North Carolina, it was like sweet. And there was no salt. I said, what's the difference? It's the same ham. I took the ham from the, the ham bag. I took some from the same ham she made for breakfast and she would give us the other uncooked ham to take home. And it tastes completely different in New Jersey than it did North Carolina. <laughs> So grandmommy came back and said, here's how you really do it. After you put a little water in the pan, and uh, you know, you, you cook it down, put some sugar on top, and the sugar cancels out the salt. And that's why it tastes sweet. And so now I can take that country ham and my toast with a little butter and my grape jelly, make a little country ham sandwich for breakfast, along with my grits on the side and my granddaddy's coffee, praise the Lord. And we're talking about having a good old breakfast. But grandmommy had to sacrifice getting her own personal sleep, getting up early when, you know how we like to just like, you know, kick around a little bit, a little bit more, get all, touch all the cool spots in the bed, on the sheets, and then and snuggle up in the blankets. You know, and, and get that last few weeks, Grandmommy would sacrifice that time to make sure that we all had a good, wholesome, nutritious breakfast. 
She did without. That somebody else could have. She was always about that preparation. So I think about a, a person that is considered a, a scout that goes out and they, uh, they, they scout out the land. They spy out the land to see if it's good for us or if it's bad for us. Uh, who, who sent out some spies to check out the land? Somebody, this is a Bible quiz. Who sent out some spies to check out the land to see if it was flowing with milk and honey? Who sent them? Who, who sent them out? What, who's, was it Moses? Moses, who did Moses send out? Joshua and Caleb and how many other? How, how many spies? Were there 10? Or were there 12? There were 12 spies? Okay, and so he sent out the 12 spies and 10 of them came back and said, oh yeah, Moses, yeah, yeah, the land is, you're flowing with milk and honey all right. It's got big grapes, it's got pomegranates, it's got leeks and garlic, it's got melons and cucumbers, it's got all these wonderful things. But one thing, Moses, there are giants in the land. We're like grasshoppers in this. Like, we, oh, we, 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 don't, we don't want you to go, we can't go there. They'll, they'll eat us alive. They'll destroy us. And so those ten spies shook up the congregation. But there were two that were men of hope and faith. Men of possibilities. And, said, and then there was Joshua and Caleb. They said, oh yeah, there's giants in the land. But, but if God says we can take it, we can take it. Let's do what God says. Let's stand on God's word. Let's stand on the promises of Almighty God. Contrary to what the ten are saying, if God said it, Moses, we can do it. So let's encourage the congregation. Come on, congregation. We can do this thing. Yes, there are giants in the land, but if God says he's going to give it to us, then he's going to give it to us. We can have it. But a lot of people murmur and complain because of the ten. A lot of people lost out because of the negativity. Because they couldn't believe what God had in store for them. They felt if we can't do it in our own strength, it can't be done. But God's been trying to tell you all along, you can never do anything in your own strength. Without God, you can't do anything. So Paul, Apostle Paul, had to summarize it in the New Testament to say, but I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. That's how it gets done. Yes, Amen. Because in one of the old devotional songs, we used to sing, Without Him, I can do nothing. Without Him, I surely fail. Without Him, I would be drifting like a ship. Without a sail. You remember that song? Praise God. Those old timey songs, praise God, don't ever get rid of those. Amen. Those are mainstays. Those are anchors. Amen. That have that hook. Amen. Amen. That, that, that anchor that holds in uh, and grips that solid rock. And Jesus said, Amen. So it's in times like these. We need a Savior. In times like these, we need an anchor, be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock, this rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only Son. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid. So, my 
our brothers and sisters, when you think of this topic today, even when you think of that topic that says, wake up and smell the coffee, that I'm using as a topic today, wake up and smell the fish. In order to wake up and smell the coffee or the fish, somebody had to be preparing the coffee or the fish before you woke up. Right. Yeah. 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 Think about that. Yeah. How can you wake up and smell coffee if nobody's making coffee? <laughs> How can you wake up and smell the fish if nobody's cooking fish? Somebody had to get up and do the preparatory work before you woke up. Right. And every day, God is doing preparatory work in our lives. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. So the new mercies have been prepared by the Lord before you even enter the new day. Because he's about tomorrow. He's about the future. Why? Because he is the future. He is tomorrow. That's why somebody said, I don't worry about tomorrow. I mean, I just live from day to day. I don't worry about the future for the clouds may turn to gray. Amen. But, but here's, the, here's what they said in the course. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow. Hallelujah. And I know who holds my head. That's why I'm glad that God has, amen, me covered on both sides of his name. Amen. Because he's the Alpha and the Omega. And I'm all in between, praise God. He's the beginning. And the end, I'm in between. He's the first. And he's the last. I'm in between, praise God. That's why you can call me Maya. Don't call me Maya, just call me Maya. Amen. Between two S's, which is the longest word in the dictionary. S, mile, S, smiles. Why is Smile is the longest word in the dictionary because there's a, a there's a mile between two S's. Right. <laughs> you didn't get that. But what did you want to wake up about? That That's what he meant. <laughs> you get it. Praise the Lord. I, I tell those time delayed jokes sometimes. Praise the Lord. But you'll get it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. But I'm in between God's plan. So. My past and my present and my future are all in his hands, all in his control. Because he's the first and the last. He's out in the lake and the end. Yeah, yeah. He's everything. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, so glad that he, he did the preparatory work in my life. So he knows where I'm going. Because the steps of a righteous man or woman are ordered by the Lord. He knows about your steps before you take them. He knows, he knows what you want to think before you think them. He knows what you want to say before you say it. He knows what you're not going to do before you don't do it. He knows everything about you. He knows the number of hair on your head before you comb it tomorrow. Before you comb it tomorrow, he said, oh, minus five. He knows that number. He knew that I would be using one of these fine tooth combs even at the age of 69. When I couldn't do it when I was 15, 16, 17, because I was breaking Afro picks, y'all. The metal ones, I was bending metal Afro picks with this hand of mine. Well, look at me now, look at myself. Look at me now, fine tooth comb. Amen. Years ago, I would break every tooth in this little thing right here. But God knew that things were going to change. Amen. And oh, what a wonderful change took place in my life when Jesus came into my heart. Praise God. So the best part of waking up is Jesus in my life. But let, let me come to the close here. Wake up and smell the fish. 
Jesus is about preparing before we get to where we have to go. So because he knows the steps that we take, he knows the pathway that we're going, he knows all our trials, test tribulations, he knows our, our past, present, and our future, then we don't worry about the future because it's under his command and control. Even when the devil is, is raging against us and all the demons are raging against us, God has weapons of warfare, amen, that will overcome all of the weapons of the devil. For the Bible says, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. So why are you worrying about them prospering against you? If he said no weapon that is formed against you will shall prosper. Shall means future. Mm, all right. All right. The shall mean future. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. And present. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because having been passed, no weapon could have, should have, would have. Amen. But he said, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So let the devil hurl his level worse at you uh -huh. and at me. Uh -huh. Amen. Anchor yourself in Jesus. Yes. Become unmovable. Yes. Become unshakable. Always abounding in the work and the love of the Lord. Praise yes. God. For no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Because yes. God said it, not me. No weapon. No weapon. What shall separate you and I from the love of God and from Christ Jesus? Shall famine? Shall disease? Shall pestilence? Shall distress? Shall tribulation? Shall persecution? Shall nakedness, peril, sword? Shall they separate you from the love of God? Paul said, look, I'm persuaded, yeah. I'm thoroughly convinced, amen, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Nothing's going to come between my soul and my Savior. Oh, they're going to try. They're going to make a feverish attempt. But nothing's going to separate us from the love of God. See, because it's not about our holding power. Because your holding power, my holding power, we're going to go in a heartbeat. But it's about the Lord's holding power on us. It's about the Lord's love that's in us that's going to keep us in there. See, because if we have to depend upon ourselves to keep ourselves in this walk of salvation, we'd be lost a long time ago. That's why a lot of folks don't want to get saved in the first place. Well, I don't want to get saved because I don't think I can stay kept. In other words, I don't think I can last that long. Because, you know, think about it, I made a New Year's resolution. You know, for January 1st, I was going to stop smoking. And I did it. January 1st. Oh boy, January 10th was over. I always get kind of tough. <laughs> January 12th came over. All of a sudden, I made it to February 1st. I made it. February 2nd, I'm in the store. Give me 12 cards. And you're trying to smoke them all on February 3rd. I don't think I can stay kept because every resolution I made, I broke. So I don't think I can stay kept in salvation. But it's not about you and me keeping myself. It's about the Lord being our keeper. He got keeper and watches over Israel. Amen. By night shall not slumber nor sleep. He is our keeper. He's the keeper of my soul. He's the keeper of my salvation. It's the Lord that giveth and taketh away. People can't do it. The devil can't do it. Death can't do it. Tribulation can't do it. Nakedness, nakedness can't do it. Sword and power or any of these things that come our way. They can't separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. So that's somebody else to argue with. Let the devil fuss at himself. You, you go ahead and fuss with yourself. I ain't got nobody. Ain't, my sweet friends, ain't nobody got time for that. Did y'all hear sweet friends? Ain't nobody got time for that. 
Amen. And yeah, somebody had to do the preparatory work before it happened. So here these men went fishing all night long and didn't catch anything. They toiled the whole night. They're coming towards the shore. Jesus said, have any meat? Did you catch anything? They said, no. Jesus said, cast the net on the other side. See, because Jesus had already prepared the fish. He said, our boys. When these disciples cast the net on the right side of the boat, jump in the net. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. And this is not T.D. Jake speaking, this is Jesus. Amen. So, have you caught anything? No. Cast your net on the right side of the ship. They cast their net on the other side of the ship, and now there's so many fish that's about to sink their boat. The other ships had to come along and help them out to bring these fish to shore, and there were how many gigantic fish that were caught? Was it a hundred and... What did the Bible say? 153? What was that number? Let's see. It's in here. It's in our Bible. 153. 153. What verse was that? Verse 11. Verse 11. Yet Simon Peter went up, drew the net to land full of great fish. A hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Mm -hmm. So now he did the preparatory work and these fish are ready to jump in the net. But get this. They're still hungry. They didn't catch anything yet. It takes time to clean the fish. It takes time to, to get some wood to start a fire. You don't start putting meat on wood that you just put with the light of fluid on, you have to wait for the, the light of fluid to burn out of the charcoal. Isn't that right? Otherwise, you want to have light of fluid tasting fish. So now you got to wait for the coals to burn down and get burned. And now you got to put the fish on. you got to wait to cook it before you can eat it. They come up the shore, and Jesus already has it prepared. Not the fish that they caught. He's got fish they don't even know about. Now how did Jesus catch all that fish to feed all those disciples? He probably did the preparatory. Yo, over here. They probably just jumped on the shore. Body spread all over him. Said bones out, out. Scale off. Head cut off, tail cut off. Okay, jump on the ground. Fire, fire, let there be fire. <laughs> He's the same way, so let there be light. He probably said, let there be fire. Amen. Oh, 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 Turn over. Oh, oh, Lord. <laughs> Jesus, I can only imagine. He didn't have to do anything with his hands if he didn't want to. But he did. Yeah. But he could have just, he just spoke the word and just grow the fish and turn it. Flip over to the other side. Barbecue sauce. <laughs> Hot sauce. So, pepper. <laughs> he could have spoken the word. Amen. But when they got to the shore with all those fish, those gigantic fish, they were ready to eat Amen. with bread. So, come and dine. <laughs> come on and eat. And so, I believe before they did any cleaning or separating of the fish, they ate first. Because they were hungry. They toiled all night long. But Jesus did the preparatory work. I'm excited about this message. I'm excited about this. Because he did the preparatory work. Doesn't the Bible say, Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemy? Now everybody gets along with you and say, look at him. <laughs> look at Jesus. Because everywhere Jesus went, there were always naysayers. There were always those Pharisees and Sadducees and those hypocrites wanting to put Jesus in there, wanting to have something to, something to say. They'll put in there two cents. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, he, 
Yeah, he probably didn't even pay for them fish. He didn't even pay for them. Did he pay his taxes on the fish? <laughs> They're straining their necks and swallowing that time. We've just been so picky about things that Jesus did when they forgot about dealing with their own soul's needs of salvation. So busy trying to ostracize and criticize and ridicule and, 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 and to scandalize. Amen. They weren't thinking about their own necessity, their own soul salvation. But yet, Jesus wanted them to wake up and smell the fish. Now, I'm going to read some verses and prayerfully without commentary so that we can close. John's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 32 down to verse number 34 says this. Please bear with me. Praise God. John's Gospel chapter 4, verse 32, down to verse number 34 says, uh, But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus said to him, unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. John's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 1, starting at verse number 1. I'm going to go down to verse number 15. That's why I have to read without commentary. So God help me, please. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that they may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Talking about preparatory. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, well, there is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. There you go. But what, is, what, what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now, there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise to the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Verse 13, Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. Verse 15, when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. And when even was now come, his disciples went down into the sea. Matthew, uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21. Please stick with me just for a few more moments. Saints. Amen. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21. Thank you, Lord. Starting at verse number 1. Down to verse 11. And when they drew nigh into Jerusalem and were come to Bethpage unto the Mount of Olives, then, said Jesus, uh, then sent Jesus to the disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if, it, if any man say aught unto you, you shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and the colt, the foil of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and straw them in the way. And the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come, 
into Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. But look at Mark's gospel, chapter 14. Talk about the same or similar account. Mark's gospel, chapter 14, verses 12 through 17. Mark 14, 12 through 17, almost finished things. Amen, praise God. 14, 12 through 17 says this. And the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? And he sent forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go you into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. And wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good men of the house. The master saith, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover? with my disciples. And he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared, there make ready for us. And then going down to verse number 17, we're in 16. And his disciples went forth, came into the city and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover, and in the evening he cometh with the twelve. Now we talked about, he said two of his disciples. Now we'll go over to Luke's Gospel chapter 22, almost finished. Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, verse 7. Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, verse 7, it says, down to verse number 21. Then came this, the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he said, Peter and John, told, those are the two disciples, amen, just to confirm who those two disciples were in Mark's Gospel. He said, Peter and John, saying, <clears throat> go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where would thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when you are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water, follow him into the house where he entered in. Man's going to meet us? Who told him to meet us? <laughs> and you shall say unto the good men of the house, the master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished there, make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. Now we're going down to verse number 21. And they made ready the Passover. Uh, verse number uh, 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down and twelve apostles with them and saith unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave to them also, gave, gave unto them, saying, this is my body, which is given you, given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, say, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But uh, behold, the hand of him that betrayed me is with me on the table. Praise God. And so, why did I share these scriptures? Because Jesus was always about the preparatory work. He said, Go into the city. You want to find a man bearing the picture. He's going to meet you, and then you tell him the master has a need, he's ready, uh, uh, where is he going to uh, have the Passover with his disciples? And he's going to comply. Jesus had already done that. He had already done the work of putting in the reservations. And it's like, well, how could he do that? He, Jesus has been so weeping with Jesus. Hey, fellas, uh, were we sleep when Jesus made these preparations? Apparently they could have been. Amen. But Jesus was always about getting up early cooking breakfast. <laughs> was always about being there to meet your needs and to prepare before you because he was always about scouting things out. And so by the time the apostles got to the people that, the, that Jesus had already uh, confirmed uh, the appointments, all they had to do was just say, okay, fine, where, okay, go. That was it. Amen. So, so Jesus is always good about scouting things out because he knows the steps that you and I are going to take 
Amen. He knew about uh, the, 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 the apostles, uh, how they were going to uh, need uh, to, to have this room prepared. He knew uh, that there were going to be a, a cult and a, and, and ask, and a cult, the following ass that were going to be released to him before that, what they call the great triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem. He, he, he said, oh, if they ever ask him, what are you doing with the, the ass and the cult? Say the master has need. And it was okay. Because Jesus put in a reservation for the donkey and the cult. Amen. Praise God. He was always doing things that we were wondering, how did he do that? We're tired. We, most of the time, they were falling asleep. Even when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And, he, and, he, and he, Peter, uh, Judas Iscariot had betrayed him. And so now Jesus takes the other 11. And he takes Peter, James, and John. So 11 minus 3 years. 11 minus 3 years. 8, okay. He tells the 8, you stay here and pray. Now it takes Peter, James, and John, the other 3, because 8 plus 3 years. 11. And so you stay here and watch and pray. He goes and he prays to the Father. Father, if it be thy will, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He comes back to check out on these three apostles. He says, what? You fast asleep? Couldn't you but wait for but one hour? Watch and pray. The devil desires to sip your week. Watch and pray. From the, you know, to protect you from now hour temptation. He goes back. He says, and watch and pray. He goes back and he prays again. Praise him to sweat like great drops of blood fall from his brow. Father, if it be thy will, take this cup from me. Praise God, and nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He comes back to those same apostles that. Because one was gone. That was gone. That was gone. I had to add that. And you know I got it. This is for me, y'all. <laughs> For me, praise God. Remember these I don't know how you attach things in your head and your brain to remember it and memorize scripture. Praise That's how I do it. Praise God. Okay. I got some things going on up in here. Praise God. That's how I remember. Praise God. And so, so they're fast asleep. He said, What could you watch with me just another hour? Come, come on, wake up, pray, seek the, seek the Lord. He goes back and he prays again now. It finalizes, he concedes to the Father's will. He comes back and he wakes them up one more time. So this was more so the MO, the modus operandi of the apostles, because they get weary like we get weary. Right. Right. You know, if I preached another, another hour, uh, I'm sure you would do what they were doing. You fall asleep. Lord Jesus. <laughs> And if you fell asleep while I was preaching, I'm sure God was giving you the message in your sleep. <laughs> Amen. He said that, you know, there'll be dreams and visions. All the rest of that, praise God. But this is for us. To know that he knows the path that we take. Because he's the one that's ordering those steps. So I'm so grateful. Amen. That in today's text, amen, the best part of living up is, is Jesus in our lives. Yes. Amen. And we just need to wake up and smell the fish, knowing that we know who holds tomorrow. Amen. So, many things about tomorrow I don't see to understand but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand many things about tomorrow many
liberty to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord, God, and Savior. This might be your last opportunity to do so. We thank God, amen, for giving us one more chance to get it right. One more day, amen, to get it right. To ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins and come into our hearts. Sometimes we put things off, but sometimes that procrastination can be danger to our destination, amen. Where today can be our last day. I've heard of people uh, going to church, amen, and then heard one lady after church benediction. She went out in the parking lot, sat in the car and passed away. Heard the pastor preached the message, sat down and passed away, praise the Lord. Heard of people went home after church, praise the Lord. Went home, sat down on the couch, passed away, praise God. We just never know when our last day or last hour or our last breath will happen. But we do know that we have right here and we have right now. And so I'd like to encourage you, amen, we're not trying to embarrass anyone, but let's, let's give you a personal opportunity to have a talk with Jesus. Repeat these simple words in your own personal sanctuary of your heart as we all say this prayer together because we're not about embarrassment, amen. But we're about giving you an opportunity to accept the Lord. And so as you can bow your head and close your eyes and as everyone prays the prayer of faith together, as some of us are now praying this prayer of reaffirmation, recommitment, and rededication, this might be your first time. And so as we're praying this prayer together, experience Jesus for yourself. And say, Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you suffered, bled, died, buried, and risen again for my sins. And I thank you for saving me now. I give my heart to you. I give my life to you. And I ask you to help me to live for you and serve you the rest of the days of my life with your help. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you pray that prayer, you're saved today, not based on feelings or experience, but you're, based, you're saved based on God's word. We said if you confess with your mouth and believe your heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Amen. He didn't say that there will be thunder or earthquakes or lightning or, or, or clapping of, 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 of cymbals. Amen. And angels crying out and lights shining all over the place. No, he just said that you just put your trust in him and he'll save you. So let him do the rest. Because it's not about you staying kept. It's about him keeping you. So thank God. He is our keeper. He's our shade on the right hand. He's our everything. He's our rock. He's our refuge. He's our strength. He's our solid rock. He's our salvation. Amen. Of whom shall we fear? Praise the God. Praise the Lord God. And so... I invite you, if you don't know Jesus, or if you have, have accepted Jesus Christ today, to consider joining Second Baptist Church. And if there's anyone in the midst that would desire to become a member of Second, the doors of the church are now open, that you might come forward, praise God, and receive you into the body of Christ. We all know we're not a perfect church by any means, but we serve a perfect Savior, and His name is Jesus. Jesus. Praise the Lord. And so if you see any flaws or you see any imperfections in any of us, please be patient with us. We're under construction. But when God gets through with us, we shall come forth as pure gold, every one of us. Praise the Lord. And so is there one or are there several? Are there many that will come to join Second Baptist Church and become a member of us? Amen. Be part, be part of our family of God here at Second Baptist Church. You can come forward. Amen. We'll pray with you. Praise the Lord and receive you into our fellowship. Amen. Is there one? Are there several or many? Praise God. Well, see none. Praise the Lord. May God richly bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Walk with the King today and be a blessing as we prepare to dismiss.
Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our souls have felt. We have come to worship you. We've come, oh God, to be instructed by you. Now, God, we go forth as shining lights before the world. Letting our light so shine before men, women, boys, and girls that they'll see our good works to in turn glorify you, our Father, which is in heaven. So now as we prepare to dismiss from this high and holy place, but not from your presence. Go with us. Stand by us. Bless us and make us a blessing until we meet again. And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, may he rest, rule, and abide with us, both now, henceforth, and evermore, that all of God's people sing. Amen.